Hi everyone, it's Jen, and this week I am coming to you from the park, or the playground. So it's kind of weird because there are people kind of coming and going, so if I'm a little, like, it's just because I don't usually do this thinking that maybe there will be people passing me by, but it seems like a nice place to do it. So um, I took you to the beach last time, I figured I'd take you to the park today park. Maybe at the end I'll show you the rest. There's nothing here. It's basically a parking lot, but um, <laughs> it used to be an awesome playground. <laughs> um, anyway, so today uh, we are talking, as I scratch my cheek, we are talking about eating disorders and competitiveness. So in this video I'm going to talk about when weight stopped mattering to me. Also, how I dealt with and how you can deal with competitiveness in anorexia or restrictive types of eating disorders. And also how I dealt with and how you can deal with competitiveness in bulimia. And when I say, or um, actually this can also apply to binge eating or EDNOS, which I also struggled with a lot. Um, so please, you know, use this however you, you can. And when I say competitiveness, I'm saying competitiveness not just with others, but with, with myself as well. So um, I kind of refer to both um, in this video. So weight stopped mattering to me when I immersed myself in other goals and passions that I had for myself. Um, for a while this was an interesting challenge because one of these passions was playing music in what happened to be dance studios playing with dancers um, I loved the idea of going to rehearsals and being an inspiring force for these dancers and vice versa um, it was truly a magical experience but the timing was interesting as it was one of the first things I really pursued in my recovery and I was in a dance studio with mirrors that covered entire walls um, for many days, um, sometimes hours a day. So um, what I did, and this was over altogether about a year, but kind of give and take um, as a, the year got farther along. Um, so um, what I did was, um, oh, not constantly either, just so you know. But yeah, what I did, <laughs> I took that opportunity to zone in that much more on the art. So ironically enough, I stopped caring about weight during the time that I had the biggest mirrors around me. Um, clearly this is not my message for you. Uh, don't go around and surround yourself with mirrors um, necessarily, unless it's for a very therapeutic purpose. Um, I'm just using this as an interesting example of something that almost forced me to see mirrors in a different kind of way. Um, a suggestion to those of you who don't think you'd be triggered, maybe watch some dance, watch some videos, go see a dance performance. Uh, go see a show, a um, Broadway show, um, or other kinds of shows. If you want to see the human form completely transform, uh, watch dance. Um, don't watch dancers. I don't mean watch the people who are dancing. Watch dance. Uh, watch the movement. Um, watch how free they are and how free they feel. And know that this freedom that they express is not dictated by their size. Uh, they're dancers of all sizes. So find them and watch them in action if you'd like to. Um, with that, uh, and that's something that I, I enjoy doing before my eating disorder started, so that, that's something that has always applied to me, so it may or may not apply to you, you know, what you, what you are inherently drawn toward, but just as an example. Um, you may also want to watch trapeze, or do trapeze, who knows. Um, so with that, uh, rather than comparing yourself to the people around you, um, so not dance anymore, um, the people who are around you every day, um, observe who they are, observe them, not their bodies, um, but their actions, their mannerisms, um, their gestures, their personalities, their expressions. See them as whole people and you may start to apply those same ideas to yourself because you are a whole person, not just a body. I stopped caring about weight when I noticed that others around me didn't care very much about their current weight or about gaining weight. Um, so in a sense, being around people, no matter their size, who don't care about their weight is good. Um, sorry, there's a person coming. Okay. Take from them. Uh, let that rub off on you. And um, it helped me a ton. Um, I stopped comparing myself to others and started learning from them and letting their healthy attitudes toward themselves rub off on me. 
Um, as far as being the sickest or the thinnest went, I can relate this to the anorexic period of my eating disorder. Um, I knew I was thin, but I also knew that what brought me into treatment was not my thinness, but my fear. Um, you can be the sickest one you know, you could have won that kind of competition with yourself um, or with others and still not be afraid. Um, or you could have surpassed that fear uh, or the point of fear. I feel personally blessed to have been afraid. Um, that's what got me into treatment, not how thin I was. Um, because I hadn't won that game, I, you know, I was very ambivalent about being thin enough for treatment. Um, I knew I was thin, but I certainly didn't feel thin enough to meet my sickness kind of standards. Um, so rather, what I had going for me was fear. Um, if your sickness doesn't scare you, there is something wrong. And that is a sign of how sick you are. Not by how thin you are, but, how, but uh, not by physical symptoms or behaviors alone. But if you're not worried, there is something wrong. Um, so use that as your measure. Especially if others around you are worried about you and you're not worried, kind of try to see the dis dis discord there. Um, if you are scared, good, you're at an advantage. Um, the moments that you fear the sickness are the moments you're being real with yourself. Don't let the rest of it fool you. If you're scared, get help because you're scared. Um, even if you feel you aren't justified in this fear, even if you feel you don't have a right to be afraid, even if you don't know exactly why you're scared or what lies on the other side of fear, and maybe you're scared of that, uh, fear is an alert that something is wrong. Um, so it doesn't matter why or how or what or, you know, ambivalence. Fear is, it's a visceral thing. It doesn't need reason. And it's okay to seek help based solely on your fear that something feels wrong. Um, in terms of bulimia, which I struggled with earlier on, when I was bulimic, I longed to be sicker and thinner. So sicker and thinner constantly. Um, I felt that my eating disorder didn't count if I wasn't thin. Remember to tell yourself every time you have that thought. The very fact that you're having the thought is, how, is evidence of how sick you are. So stop trying to justify your sickness. Stop trying to match the inner and the outer. Try to focus on recognizing what exactly you're dealing with and know that it's not necessary to make it worse so that you qualify or are sick enough. It doesn't have to get any worse than what it is right now for you to be sick enough to begin to heal. And you deserve to heal. You deserve to heal. You have so much to give to this world and to yourself that you don't even know right now. Give yourself a chance to find out what that is and work toward it. You are so much more than this, so much more than this. Give yourself a chance to find that out. Lay the competitiveness to rest with yourself, with others. It has no place in your life. It is only there to mess with you and you don't need it. Have a good, healing, loving week and celebrate yourself and what you do for your recovery. Even the little things, celebrate them every single day. Recognize, celebrate them and they will grow. Thank you so much, and I will see you next week.